Hi again. Um, been working on a new little project. Um, I saw this at a party not uh, not too long ago, and uh, I thought that looks right nice. Somebody came up with this this little glass that lit up with LEDs. So they're tiny, tiny little. Not very many of them. They just lit up in a static colour. And I thought, well, see if I can do something like that. And maybe improve on it. So um, what we got is that, is that the um, that this is a, like a, an ordinary. This is actually a plastic tumbler, but you can see there's a little base on it there. But if we were to lift the tumbler up and then start to drink from it, you can see there it suddenly lights up. And um, and there's all sorts of patterns of lights that I've got programmed into this. Um, and unfortunately, the um, the camera doesn't do the LEDs any justice at all. The colours are really really vivid, whereas it's coming out a bit sort of whitened out uh, on the um, on the video. But it, it gives you an idea anyway. Um, there's six different patterns programmed in on this, and it just goes, works through each pattern. Um, some of them are random, flickering. Some of them are cross fading swirling ray bones all that sort of thing um so the the idea behind this is that when it was off when you first saw it it has a, a little timer on it so it runs for 180 seconds uh was that three minutes um after the three minutes it goes to sleep now the, the sleep mode isn't quite working as I'd hope it to be. It does go to sleep and it will it does conserve the battery to a degree, but um, I've got it on the wrong side of the um, of a boost book converter, and so um, it's uh, the boost book converter uses up about fifteen milliamps, and so that flattens the battery in about ten hours. But um, if we just need to make a modification to it so it doesn't do that, um, but I'll post the modification in the github page which i'll put a link in at the bottom at the end of the video um so you can get out at uh, the circuit and the the code for that and i might do another video on that i don't know what happens but the way this, this, this is so this is how it how it works as you can see there it, uh, different colors um keeps changing what we've got in here is um a series of components we've got one of these um these neo pixels um, in, in, a, um, in, a, in a ring um, these are quite easily available and this is a 12 a 12 pixel ring uh, the number of pixels obviously determines the size um, I found this works best for these type of glasses uh, but you can depending on the glass you want it doesn't work on a wine glass I've tried that it doesn't go up the stem so um, it's a bit disappointing on a wine glass uh, the first prototype it wasn't actually part of the glass the first prototype it was just like a little puck and you balance the uh, the glass on it just to get different ideas so we can experiment with different types of things so but basically it's coming through with one of these which is a, an arduino pro mini these are actually technically discontinued uh, you can still get them they're still important and uh, you can still import them from china uh, you still get them in the uk um, and then, yeah, they're, they're about four, three, four pound each in the UK. Cheaper if you go as uh, dry to China. Um, and they're going to keep going for quite some time. I think there's, there's still plenty of these available. But um, they are going to disappear off the face of the earth in the, in, in the coming years. Um, as they're just the technology. These have been going for donkey's years. And they've stopped manufacturing them, as I say. So, but at the moment, that one's there. And Arduino, even the, the nanos are going to finish as well. I think they've stopped making those two. But um, there's all sorts of different devices you can get anyway for the same idea. We've got a battery here, which is, um, this is uh, 500 milliamp hours. And uh, I would say that probably, I get about 10 hours constant use out of it. Um, maybe not quite as long as that, maybe maybe seven hours, something like that. Uh, on a full charge circuit, depends on the patterns. Um, and it depends how often it goes to sleep. But um, it could probably do with a little bit bigger if, but there's just enough room to go for maybe a 750 or an 800, uh, something like that. Uh, but it is really, really tight. And um, I came down from an 850 to this 500, and it's a lot, lot easier to squeeze everything in with a 500. This is the charging for it. Uh, obviously, it's all encased in resin, so we don't can't get at anything once it's all encased. So it's 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 wireless charging on one of these little devices. Again, these these are pennies really um and there's a little uh, control circuit for those as well uh and this goes on top of um so when we put that on top of our circuit like that there's nothing connected to it so it's not oh yes it is wow it's doing it so um is there a little led on that no there isn't so yeah you can see now it's, it's picked it picked up so that is now it's now put a voltage on the, on those output terminals i presume 
Um, as you can see from here, now we, we've got this. This has gone to sleep now. So if I if I move it, it should waken up. And um, it's going to call me a liar now, isn't it? Not waking up. Oh, there we go. So if you move it, it, it wakes up. Um, if that goes on top of the charger, there we go. Uh, it, then I've set it so that when it's charging, the LED goes off. Obviously, we don't, if it's charging, we don't want to have the LEDs running. The Arduino is still actually running, but the Arduino is only a sort of like 10 milliamps. So it's nothing in comparison to the half an amp that the battery is charging at or something like that. Um, so the, the, that, that coil is, is, is embedded right in the bottom of this. So we have a little build-up of a layer of that. So um, we would have the, the ring on the bottom layer. Then we'd have this. It's going to be difficult to do. I'm trying to do this through the camera lens. Um, so we'd have that on top of that. Then this on top of that. And this would sit on top of that. And so as you can see there, and it's all glued together. Uh, this is self-adhesive, actually, that, that, that power ring. And we've got these other bits of components into here. That's our boost buck converter. That's This is the what the thing that's causing all our problems um, with uh, going to sleep. It converts 3.7 up to 5 volts um, for the Arduino. We could have used a 3.3 volt Arduino, but I'm not sure whether that can withstand 4 volts on a full charge. Not messed about with that anyway, but um, we just need to put another uh, MOSFET in there that will... Um, pull out that um, so we can connect the battery direct to it so 3.2 volts is enough to charge it in sleep mode uh, sorry enough to keep the thing running in sleep mode um, and so um, I just need to work out a way of doing that um, that is the battery management and what I've done here is that we don't need the USB so I've just chopped it off literally cut through the circuit board to make it as small as possible to squeeze everything in may probably i'm sure we can probably get a find a, a, just a, another circuit just not, they, that's what i found so we've got a couple of these one to switch the um the leds off and the other one to switch the whole thing off um so when it goes to sleep it goes through it goes through this which turns the leds off um we've got one of these which is um a little glass uh, relay switch, read, uh, read switch. This is um, a two-way switch. It needs to be uh, normally closed so that when we bring a magnet on, it breaks the circuit, which is usually the other way around. But um, that is uh, that's so that we can turn it off with a magnet. And then uh, what else? Have we got? Oh yeah, we've got this. This is a, a trembler switch, so that you probably can't hear that rattling. Um, a little ball bearing in there, and uh, as soon as you tilt or anything like that, it, um, it just creates a momentary contact. And this is connected to pin two, which is an interrupt, so it's using the interrupt. So whenever it gets that interrupted through, um, it just turns it, it goes into sleep mode. Um, and there's, that's about it. So um, all in all, that's the way it works. I don't know whether or not I can show you on here. Um, so if I turn that upside down, <clears throat> oh, I can. I know I can show you as well. So if we do that, and somewhere, there we go, I've got a magnet. I've got a little white dot on here, just so I know where it is. But if we put a magnet just on there, and that turns it off, and then we remove the magnet, it comes back on again, um, like that. And um, so that's a way of turning it right away. If I might put this little magnet into a little base, so that once you put it into the base, it'll, it'll then turn it off. Now, the, the resin, it's all encased in resin, and it's done in three parts. Now, the bottom part, I used a 3D mould. This is it here, I'll show you. Here, let's do it. So this is this is the, um, the silicon mould that I used, and basically I just took one of the... This is the bottom of a, a bottle, plastic bottle. I think it was something like acetone or something like that. So I, I then moulded this inside inside here. So that basically went into there. And I printed, 3D printed this, which is basically the mould, which is the same width of the glass. I tried to make it as smooth as I possibly could. Uh, but it didn't really go very well. I need to do a better, I need a better way of making this mould um, or a better way of smoothing it down. But the, the texture on the 3D printing on this didn't quite come out as it should have done. Uh, but that was how I printed, how I, so I poured the, the silicon in around that and that's how that was made. And the, the, the glass can now just pop into the, uh, that's how I, I constructed it. So it was done in three in three levels. The first level, uh, at the bottom of the base, and that was the, um, 
I was about uh, t- t- two or three mil thick. Then everything, when that's gone off, everything sits on that and I put the black resin in and I filled it full of black resin. It's not actually black, it's clear resin with a black acrylic paint in it. And then they'll let that go off and then I put the um, a, a layer of clear in and then sat the glass on top of that. So when, this, when it was in here, um, I made sure everything was as vertical as I could get it and then let it go. There was an awful lot of spillage around the edge when I did this, and um, I thought, oh, here we go, that's going to be a right mess to clean up. But if you take it out, just as it's gone, it's just before it goes rock hard, but whilst it's still a tiny little bit pliable, um, it just peels off, and it comes, it just peels off really, neat, really neatly, and um, and it's fine. So, because um, I started to mess about with the scalpel on it, and it wasn't working because it was too soft for the scalpel. But um, and then I just picked a piece off from the finger and then they all came off in a little ring. So I thought, great, that'll do. So that's got that cleaned up really, really well and really easy with that. Um, so I'd highly recommend that. Um, and so that's about it. So what I'm going to do is I will put in the total cost on this lot. What was that? That was about... Um, the base was about five quid. The Arduino is about... Well, I get them, I buy them by the 10 from China and they'll come out at about £2.50 each or something. Um, and then the battery's probably about uh, five pound. Um, and the other bits and pieces are probably not much more than uh, two or three pound between the lot of them. So we're talking sort of like probably about getting on for fifteen pound, plus the cost of the resin. Um, so it's not sort of like a dirt cheap project as projects go for well, for what it is, it's, which is just sort of like a, a you know, like a, a novelty glass really. But it's good for making it, and it's um, quite mesmerising to watch it. So um, I will I'll put code in, or I'll put a link in the um, in the description to um, to my GitHub page and. Um, with the code in it and uh, and some instructions on construction on, on how to build the thing and how to put it together. Um, I might make another one in which case I'll do a complete video one bit by bit. Um, but if anybody's really keen on internet, just make a comment or something and I'll reply to those comments if you've got any questions. And I don't mind doing that at all. Um, if it's something that you fancy having a go with. Um, so all the stuff to build it will, will should be, it should be there. It should be fairly self-explanatory. But uh, as I say, by all means, give it a go. Okay, well, that's about it. Thanks very much for watching. And I've got other videos as well that you might want to have a look at for different projects. Cheers for now. Bye-bye.